Okay. Good morning. You're all doing good. A little late. Okay. So we'll start right away. I think we have enough people with us. Right. So we'll start right away. Let me share my screen. Okay, so we'll just quickly go through what we saw last class. Uh, it's 22 7, right? Okay, so we started with this uh, connection between degree of dissociation, lambda m and lambda m naught. I want you to remember this formula. Uh, alpha is equal to lambda m by lambda m naught, right? Alpha is the degree of dissociation. We saw this, right? Uh, then we went on to electrolytic cells, how it works, right? So we did, we told that we are going to take a non-spontaneous chemical reaction, uh, make it happen by up, by application of electricity, right? Okay, I told you hydrogen fuel cells, like it is very important, like this. Uh, from sodium chloride, we can produce sodium and fluorine, very important industrial process, right? So how it works, we saw there is going to be one compartment, there is going to be cathode, which turns to the negative terminal of the battery, add on turn to the positive terminal of the battery. So when I have NaCl present, right, say it is going to produce Na plus and Cl minus ions. So these ions are going to move towards their oppositely charged electrodes. Say so Na plus being positive may move towards cathode, and Cl minus being negative will move towards anode. And then you will see that uh, when Na plus moves towards the cathode, it has uh, it is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So it, it has large number of electrons. So this will get accepted to form sodium solid. Right. And then same way at anode, what will you see is that the anode will be positively charged. So when the Cl minus comes, the electron from this is going to get accept, accepted by the anode. So this is what you'll see, 2Cl minus will, be, will lose two electrons to form Cl2 gas, right? And we went on to see some applications, electroplating, we saw say, for example, if you want to go, go for gold plating on copper, uh, you will use copper as the electrodes here, and then you will use a solution which contains uh, gold ion, right? Same thing will happen, or AU plus will accept an electron to form AU, but AU where it is forming, if you see, it is going to form on the surface of the copper rod, the, the electrode which you used. Right. Then we went on to see this electrolytic refining, another this thing. So we are here to use uh, pure copper as cathode, impure copper as anode. So see you, two plus ions from this impure copper will go into the solution. And from this, it is going to go into the cathode as copper, right? Cathode, what is going to happen is Cu2 plus will accept two electrons to form copper. Now this Cu2 plus comes from the impure copper, right? So what will you see is that the size of the anode keeps on reducing and eventually you will see only anode mud, nothing will be there. And you will see that the pure copper size has increased, right? So that's what we saw in electrolytic refining. And then the, till now it was only a qualification that is what is happening, how it is happening and all that. If you want to quantify it, right, how much is going to come for that, we went on to see what is this Faraday's loss of electrolysis. Among the, I told you there are two laws. First law is what is my, um, what is that? Uh, that is, first law says that uh, the mass of the substance deposited is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity. Quantity of electricity is nothing but the charge, right? So charge is nothing but Q, Q is nothing but I into D, right? Then we went on to see this formula, M is equal to Z into I into D. I told you that we will not be using this formula, right? Instead, we'll be going for stoichiometry, right? We even did some problems. So I gave you a question, say for example, I have current of two amperes done for 200 seconds. How much amount of mg is produced from MgCl2, right? So all you have to do is first write the equation very properly, right? And then first step is, first step is write the reaction. Second step is to find the number of moles of electron. Hope you all remember. I told you number of moles of electron is Q divided by 96,500. This given charge is Q divided by 96,500, something called one Faraday. So this will give me number of moles of electron, right? And when you find the number of moles of electron, and that's it, you have to do stoichiometry. So in this case, you see the two moles of electron gives one mole of magnesium. Right. So obviously, if I have this many number of uh, moles of electron, how much amount of magnesium will be produced? And we find the mass by multiplying with the atomic mass of magnesium. Right. So that we did. 
then we went on to the another problem, I guess. Same kind of problem, right? Okay, this is where we start last class, I guess. Right? We did uh, and uh, again same the same thing we did for uh, nickel, right? So everything is similar. Like the problems we did are very similar. Fine. So let us move on. Let us move on to do another problem today. If you have, do you have any questions, people? Any questions anybody has from the previous class when you went through, you had some doubts. Anybody has any questions? Okay, I hope everything is fine. Right. Okay, let me add some page. Today, 12th. Sir, actually, yeah, please could you just explain that lambda and topic again? Lambda? Lambda M, lambda M, not that topic again. But, okay, you want to know what is this molar conductivity and limiting? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. That. Uh, sir, the exam pattern MCQs, can you explain? Uh, I know there is a new exam pattern. Uh, what do you mean by MCQs? Can you explain? Like, you so want to actually, know? Actually, uh, 12 tech exam has been divided into two parts, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're I having terminus term only MCQs. Yes, sir, how they'll ask questions in the screen, sir? So they will Pattern send that they will ask only MCQs. Yes, sir, MCQs. Only MCQ. One mark, only no 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 uh subject no basically no you don't have to write anything only mark the question that's it yes sir only one mark sir second term will have mcq start. second term that's in march or second term have, okay 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 so second this term you will have know. proper exam yes sir yes sir yes sir. Oh, this i didn't know okay uh see mcqs i think i'm not sure like i don't see uh, for your like it's not going to be the level of je obviously because uh for you, it should be like, say, for example, if I have to ask a question, like it will be like among the following, right? Among the following, which will be, which of the following concentration terms will be, you know, affected by temperature. Say, for example, I'll give you mole fraction, molarity, molality, and say one more, say mass percentage, something like that I give. And I ask you to find which is affected by temperature. Right, so obviously you know the answer would be molarity because I have volume term. Like like this kind of questions will be asked. This is what I guess. Right, see nobody will be able to know what exactly what type of questions they'll be asking. Right, because this is the first time they are doing it. But as far as I'm concerned, obviously they will be asking you this kind of theoretical questions. Okay, this is just, this is just uh, you know um, uh, example for you. Or obviously I'm going to have, going to have problems. Problems you don't have to worry. Problems you just have to solve and then get the answer and choose the correct answer. Any another chat is there. Uh, sir, we can start solid state or B block after this lesson instead of chemical kinetics for the first term. We have solution, solid state, biomolecules, halogens, halorines, halorines, you know the B block elements. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, we'll look into it, what, what we can do. Fine. So maybe we'll start with solid state or uh, P block elements is so boring. Uh, we'll see what we can do about it. Yeah, but we can start with solid state, not a big deal. We can do that. Sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Sir, and while you're keeping the exams on like Saturday and Sunday, sir, uh, can you just uh, keep the paper as the, this objective types so that, so that we can practice and... Uh... Sure, 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 sure. Like, uh, like definitely than if, asking questions, sir. Definitely, definitely. What do you mean by asking questions? In the sense that you want to do their exam in terms of the pattern which you want to, which you, sir, which you will write. Can you keep the exam, test right? in the exam pattern, sir? Because it's new. Sure, sure. You have to write. Sure, sure, sure. Like I'll tell, I'll, uh, like the, definitely they will know, right? Different people will know that this, this has been changed. So yeah, like you don't have to worry. We will conduct the exams only in that pattern. It's not a big deal at all. Okay. All right. So... Yeah, uh, so this is the thing, like you have solid state solution. Yeah, ele electrochemistry is also not there in the first term. No, sir, oh. I don't think it's the second term, sir. Chemical kinetic. Chemical kinetic is not there, right? I yes, mean, sir. In the, okay, second okay. term. Okay. So from the, from, from what we have completed, only solutions are there in your first term. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so alcohol ethos phenols are completed to you from the other, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Complete. Hello, alkenes and alcohols. Okay, both are completed. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So then, fine then. We'll we'll first to complete this. But I just require some half an hour, forty two minutes for me to complete um, electrochemistry. Maybe we'll start with solid states after that. Okay, fine. And then P block elements. We'll see P block elements. Once we complete solid solid state, we'll go for P block elements. But P block elements, I there is no point in teaching teaching as such. Okay, so we will plan something innovative. 
right? Because teaching is also boring, listening to it is also boring, right? So we'll come up with some plan for P block elements. What we'll do? Okay, I'll try. I'll try to chalk it out. What we are gonna do here? Fine. Anyways, so we'll start for today's class. Any other questions anybody has? Could you give recap on molar conductivity? Oh, recap of molar conductivity. Ah, yeah, yeah, that I'll do definitely. Yes, yes. So today's date is twenty five. Yeah. Okay. So molar conductivity and limiting molar conductivity. We'll try to understand again. Okay. Fine. <clears throat> so this all started with the graph, right? The graph basically was between. Lambda m and root c. Okay, so before we move on to this, we'll try to understand what is lambda m, right? So lambda m, how do I define it? Lambda m is nothing but molar conductivity. Okay, so how do I define it? Is it is the conductivity value, right? It is the conductivity value of a certain volume. Okay, whatever be the volume, I don't care. Certain volume. But that particular volume should contain one m solution, one m of the electrolyte, right? So if I have one m of an electrolyte of certain volume, whatever is the conductivity value of that is what is my molar conductivity. That is how we define it. Okay, so it's very simple for us to understand from the formula also. If I know the formula is lambda m is equal to k by c, right? So if the concentration is equal to one m, so what happens? Lambda m becomes equal to the conductivity. That's what is exactly the term here. If I have one m of the electrolyte of certain volume, right, the conductivity value is the molar conductivity value. So it's basically very simple. Lambda m is equal to k by c. And obviously, I told you that you have to include a thousand, right, depending on what is the unit requirement. If at all I have la uh, the lambda m unit is Simon meter squared per mole, or it is Simon centimeter squared per mole. Right. Okay. So depending on that, again, K will be given in terms of either Simon per meter or Simon per centimeter. So if at all I want the answer in terms of Simon meter squared per mole, and if the K value is given in terms of Simon per meter, you have to put a thousand. Same way, if at all the answer is required in terms of Simon centimeter squared per mole, and if K value is given in terms of Simon per centimeter, again you'll multiply by thousand. So eventually, every time you have to multiply by thousand. That's what I. That's what I'm telling. Okay, fine. So now, if I plot a graph, now we understood what is molar conductivity. If I plot a graph between molar conductivity and the concentration, not exactly the concentration, but the root of concentration, right? So we expect two graphs, one being a straight line like this, the another being a curved line like this. We know this is for strong electrolytes, this is for weak electrolytes, and I might know why this happens. Right. So obviously, as the concentration increases, you can see as the concentration increases, lambda m value will keep on decreasing. Right. I told you why also because if concentration increases, right, if concentration increases, it is actually inversely related to the mobility of the ion, ions present. Right. Because the, when I have high concentrations, there will be less space for the ions to move, and obviously, less conductivity value will be there. Okay, so more and more dilution, more and more mobility, molar more, more and more molar conductivity or conductivity for that matter, right? But if concentration increases, lambda m value decreases either by the formula you can understand or by the scientific explanation you can understand how why is it happening like this? Okay, now for strong electrolytes, I told you just you add little amount of water, you go for dilution, there'll be large amount of ions produced, and that's why you see it as a straight line, very steep increase, very fast increase. Right, but in case of weak electrolytes, same amount of water you add, the increase in lambda m is very slow. That's why you see that there's a curved line. Okay, right now, uh, if I just extrapolate this graph for this for the strong electrolyte, if I just extrapolate this graph, now you will get a point on the y-axis. This is a lambda m value, right? This is some lambda m value, and what you can understand is this is the lambda m, which is the which can have the maximum value. This is maximum lambda m. Obviously, other than this is not possible, right? This is the maximum value possible, right? So what is the maximum value? Maximum value of lambda m you will get when I have zero concentration, right? Maximum value of lambda m I'll get when I have a zero concentration, right? So that is how now I'm going to define a new term. This particular lambda m, that is the maximum value of lambda m, that is a zero concentration is what is called as lambda m naught or it is also called as lambda m infinity. Now, whether you're talking about zero concentration 
or we're talking about infinite dilution. Either way, both of them are same, right? So now this is what is called as limiting molar conductivity, right? Limiting molar conductivity, okay? Which is nothing but the lambda m value, that is the molar conductivity at zero concentration. That is what is defined as limiting molar conductivity. Okay, now this limiting molar conductivity for me to find out for strong electrolytes, we can easily find out, right? But for weak electrolytes, if you try to extrapolate, like we are not going to get the value like that, right? So for that reason, we went on to cold process law, right? Uh, this also you want to know, Rohan? Cold process law is also is okay. Yes, sir, yes, sir. please. Sir. You want to know this? Okay, cool. Fine. So what cold process law says is that any electrolyte, I don't want to give the statement now because I know the statement. What cold process law says is that whatever be the electrolyte, whether it's strong or weak, right? The lambda M naught, it talks only about the limiting molar conductivity. Lambda M naught of any electrolyte, say AB, is equal to the sum of the individual ions. Obviously, AB will form, say, A plus and B minus. Right? So if at all I want to find the uh, uh, limiting molar conductivity of the entire electrolyte, all you have to do is just add the individual ions is limit, limiting molar conductivity. As simple as that. Right? So if at all I want to find for AB, you, you find the value of for A plus, find the value for B minus, and you add them both, and you will be getting the lambda M naught of AB. Okay, now there are certain things you have to understand. The, in this case, they are monopositive, mononegative, and the stoichiometric coefficients are one and one. So there is no problem, right? If not, you have to understand that the charge, whatever be the charge, that has to be divided, right? And whatever be the stoichiometric coefficient, right, that has to be multiplied. In the sense that, um, like for example, if I take Al2O3 for, I'll take A, okay, Al2O3 for example, I want to find the lambda M0 of Al2O3. First, try to understand Al2O3 will dissociate to form two moles of Al3 plus plus three moles of O2 minus. Okay, now if at all I want to find this value, lambda M0 of Al2O3, now you understand that the, I told you that stoichiometric coefficient has to be multiplied. Now, first you see for aluminium. Aluminium has a stoichiometric coefficient of 2, right? So I will write 2 into lambda M0 of Al3 plus, but this is not over, guys. The thing is, I, I told you that the charge value has to be divided. Now look at the charge. Charge is 3, right? So 2 is the stoichiometric coefficient. I multiply 3 is the charge, so I divide it. So it will be 2 by 3 into lambda M0 of Al3 plus, plus, now the stoichiometric coefficient is 3, charge is 2, so it will be 3 by 2 into lambda M0 of O2 minus. That's it. This is what is called, this is my cold process law. Very, very simple. And one last thing is that obviously any electrolyte, any electrolyte for that matter will undergo dissociation, right? Now, how much dissociation will happen, right? How much dissociation will happen is given by the term alpha, uh, that is the degree of dissociation, right? Now, that is given by lambda m that is the molar conductivity divided by the limiting mark that's it okay, okay. Is it okay? I have here. yeah tell me so lambda m not of al3 plus will be given in the question sir first to substitute it kind of uh something like that we solve some problems if you can remember how they will give is they will give say uh three four electrolytes is lambda m value Right, and then you have to you know uh, expand it and write it like this, like how we wrote it here. Okay, and you will know the overall value. This is equal to something, right? That value will be given to you. Like that, there'll be so many values, and then you have to take only the ions which are required for you. Say, for example, uh, I require AlCl3s. Okay, I want to know lambda m not of AlCl3. Okay, say aluminium value is given, some x is given to you. Okay, say I can give uh, lambda M naught of um, uh, NaCl. Okay, that is also given to you, say X2. And I have lambda M naught of Na2O is also given to you. Say so these, these three values are given X1, X2, X3. X1 is for Al2O3, uh, X2 is for NaCl, X3 is for Na2O. And I want to find what is the lambda M naught of AlCl. Okay, now please understand, you will know how to expand it and write like this, you know how to expand it and write. 
for all of these. Okay. Now for for this, if you write, I write how how will I write this? It will be lambda n naught of a l three plus. Actually, I have to divide by three because I have charge plus three into lambda m naught of c l minus. Right, three into lambda m naught of c l minus because I I know that l l from three these things. So from this, all these three, you have to get this alone. Right. See, you get lambda m naught of a l three plus here. Right, but you have two by three into lambda and not of l and uh, al three plus. But I require only one by three. So what I do? I'll multiply this entire equation by two. So x x one value will also be divided by two. Right, and then you require cl minus. So cl minus will be coming from this. Right, but I require three cl minus. So I'll multiply this value entirely by three. Right, that's it. You got one by three al minus. Three into cl minus. I mean al al three plus and three into uh, cl minus. Everything you got. But still, there will be something extra. What will be extra? Three by two O two minus will be extra, and obviously, uh, uh, N A plus will be extra. A, A, A N A plus will be extra. This will be extra. O two minus will be extra, and for that only it is given. N A two will be given. So you add these two values. That is, you multiply, you divide this by two, and multiply this by three, and you add these two. That's it, and then you have something extra also. That is, N A and O are still extra. So you accordingly multiply here, and you add the first two equations, subtract this equation. That's it. You are getting the value of this. Okay, so I understood. Right, like this only questions will be asked. Okay, right. Fine. Anybody has any other question? I think Mitu yesterday asked me some question in the chat. Uh, what is the question, Kanna? You want to ask me? Sir, I asked the related to the second lesson. Sir, solutions. I asked. I asked whether yeah, ideal exactly. solution. I asked whether ideal solutions or non-ideal solutions are <coughs> there are deleted, sir, because it isn't related to anything. Uh, Raoult's law. It has separate. Uh, it is related to it is related to Raoult's law only, right? See, how do sir. I define ideal solutions? So the concept. Ideal... Sir, the... No, yeah, it is related to Raoult's law. Yeah, it is related to Raoult's law. How do I define ideal solutions? I have four conditions, right? What are the four conditions? For a solution to be ideal, what are the four conditions? Anybody remembers? Obey Raoult's law. Obviously, that's the first case. It has to obey Raoult's law. Ah, okay. Second one. And the. Uh, L equal to zero. Until we mix, that is, n uh, volume of mixing is equal to zero. Okay, next. Until we mix, it should be zero. Ah. Exactly, enthalpy of mixing should be zero, and last, cohesive force should be equal to the adhesive force. Cohesive force should be equal to the adhesive forces, right? So if these conditions are satisfied, then it becomes an ideal solution. But we know it will not form ideal solutions because this Raoult's law will not be there. This can be greater than zero, less than zero. This can be greater, lesser. Everything can happen. And among this, I have two things: non-ideal solutions. I have positive deviation, negative deviation, and we know how the graph looks. Hope you remember the graph will look like this for ideal solution. For say positive deviation, it is going to look like this. For negative deviation, it will look like this. Right? We saw all this. Yes, it is connected to Raoult's law. Okay, Mithun, understood. Yes, sir. When I saw the portion, it wasn't clearly mentioned, sir. That's why. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Thank you, sir. No issues. No issues. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody has? Actually, what is the time? We started by nine forty-five, almost half an hour. Went. Okay, so like, do you want to use this class as a doubt clearing class? Like, when actually, actually, ask me doubts even from the chapters which I have not taught you. Say, I'll call it the phenols. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll. Any questions anybody has? Like, or the previous chapters? Anything you want to ask? You want me to teach me again? Anything? Fine then. So I think uh, everybody is okay. Then we can move on, right? Any anybody has any other questions? Good. Fine. Fine. So we'll continue with electrochemistry. We'll just try to complete it. <clears throat> right. So we'll do some more problems. I want to give you more problems on this Faraday's laws.
today is like this month is uh, tamil month of hadi right so near my house there is this amman temple so there there is this sort of pyramid are going on that's why you are hearing the music and stuff it's not in my home i am looking for the right problem to give to you just give me a moment Okay. Take this question. How long? How long? A current of three amperes. How long? A current of three amperes has to be passed. How long? A current of three amperes has to be passed. Through a solution of silver nitrate, through a solution of silver nitrate, to coat a metal surface. So we're talking about electroplating, guys. Okay. So through a solution of silver nitrate to coat a metal surface, to coat a metal surface of area, to coat a CO eighty, right? To coat a metal surface of area eighty centimeter square, and thickness area of eighty centimeter square, and thickness of zero point zero zero five mm. Okay, and per thickness of zero point zero zero five mm. I mean, this is the thickness value. Okay, right. One more thing is given to you: density. Of Ag, right, is ten point five gram per centimeter cube. Okay, density of Ag is ten point five gram per centimeter cube. Okay, I'll repeat the question, people. How long a current of three amperes has to be passed through a solution of silver nitrate to coat a metal surface of area eighty centimeter squared and thickness of zero point zero zero five mm? And the density of Ag is given to be ten point five gram per centimeter cube. Okay, and obviously you know the atomic weight of Ag is one hundred eight gram per mole. Okay, think about it. It's a nice question, right? It's just obviously you have to do the everything whatever we learned in the last class. Extra, you will have this coating thing also, right? Think about it. I'll definitely help you with the answers. I'll give you maybe five, five, ten minutes for you to think about it and get me the answer. Go for it. And anyways, I'll help you if you're not if you're not able to get. It. Just try. Then then actually I'll unmute myself, people, because it's a little noisy. Let's the chat again. Sir, I'll draw it and I got this one multiple times. No, no issues. No issues, Harshin Harini. No issues.
sir. Yes, tell me. Yes, can I tell you? The, the what is the molar mass of silver, sir? Yeah, that's what. One or eight gram per mole. That is the atomic weight. Yes. Sir, I'm getting one twenty five, sir. I'm sorry, I was in mute and I was talking. I'm so sorry. So yeah, one twenty five, one twenty five, one twenty five. What seconds, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, the answer is correct. The exact answer is one twenty five point zero nine seconds. Okay, that's the exact answer. Right now, very simple people. Like you don't have to worry about this so much. Or data is given to you, right? Anyways, fine. We'll try to do this problem then. Okay. See, uh, they are asking you about the time period. How much time a current of three amperes, I is equal to three amperes, how long a current of uh, this much uh, should be uh, flown into uh, silver nitrate, silver nitrate only, right? Yeah, silver nitrate. And so that you will be able to coat a metal surface having this much dimensions. Okay, right. Now, see, first thing what I can find is the volume. Okay, volume of AG required will be basically the volume of this particular coating. How much, how much area is there to coat? How much volume is there to coat? That much amount of AG is required. That much volume of AG is required, right? Now you can easily understand volume will be what? Volume will be area into thickness. Hope you all know this, right? Volume is equal to area into thickness, <clears throat> right? But again, if at all you multiply 80, into 0 0.005, is it correct? No, sir. Is it? Why is it not correct? 0 0.05 millimeters. Uh, correct, right? You have to convert this into centimeter, right? So I think uh, uh, how much? 10 millimeters is one centimeter or 100, right? 100 millimeters is one centimeter. Is it correct, guys? Or 10? 10 millimeters is one centimeter. Okay, thank you. It's been a long time since I used this. Okay, so 10 millimeter is one centimeter. So obviously I have to divide this by 10, right? So it is going basically going to be 0 0.0 three zeros and five centimeter. Okay, right. So now I should not be multiplying with this. I should be multiplying with this. Okay, so now you've got uh, the volume of AG, right? So eight into five will become 40. And there is one more zero, one more zero gets cancelled. So it is going to be 0 0.04 centimeter cube. No issues. That will be the area. Sorry, that will be the volume. Okay. 
0.04 centimeter cube will be the volume of ag required but we cannot do anything with the volume right uh, all we if i can know the mass and then the problem is solved right for finding the mass only density is given to you right so density is equal to mass by volume density is given as 10.5 gram per centimeter cube mass we don't know and i know what is the volume volume is 0.04 centimeter cube right so i can find the mass of ag right that will be 10.5 into 0.04 if i do that uh, 105 to 10 uh, 2 into 2 will become 420 right so 420 uh, how many points three points right so 0 0.420 grams am i right am i doing it correct uh, 10, 105 will become 210, 210 into 2 will become 420 and 3 points. Yeah. Yes, sir. 0 0.42. Yeah. Yeah. 0 0.420 grams of AG is required. Right. And that's it, people. We are done. Right. Now, what we are going to do is again the same uh, stoichiometry only. I know AG plus will accept AG to form AG solid. Right. Now, I know the number of moles of this now. If we are doing the exact opposite, before and all, what we will do? We'll find the number of moles of electron and do the stoichiometry. Now, this time I know the number of moles of AG form. You have to find the number of moles of electrons. And from that, you have to find your time period. Okay, that is what is asked. Anyways, we'll try to do this. Okay, so first, this is the number of moles of uh, AG, sorry, uh, mass of AG. So the number of moles of AG will be given mass by molecular mass, that is 0 0.42 divided by 108. Right, divided by 108 will be the number of moles of uh, ag right so if i have this to be this number of moles to be uh, 0.42 divided by 108 now you see one mole of electron gives one mole of ag so obviously this many moles of ag will require same number of moles of electrons also okay one mole gives one mole so this many moles requires this many moles very simple right so i know the number of moles of electron that is nothing but 0 0.42 divided by 108 and again i know the formula q divided by f is what is the formula for number of moles of electron given charge divided by 96500 if you call you right right f1 f is 96500 right so what is this q q is nothing but i into t right so i can write like this 0 0.42 divided by 108 is equal to i which is 3 amperes you can see here i of 3 amperes t we don't know right divided by 96500 so what like if you want to find t t would be 0 0.42 into 96500 divided by 108 into 3 so you will be getting the approximate answer as 125 seconds that would have been the discussion very simple i'll again repeat what and all we did so first we found out volume by using the formula area into thickness both of them are given to you only thing you need is convert millimeter to centimeter and then you did this then you found out the volume, sorry, then you found out the mass because mass is only required for number of moles calculation by using the formula density is equal to mass by volume. Density is given to you, volume we calculated, right? So we know the mass. Now, once you know the mass of mg required, you know the number of moles of mg required, that is 0 0.42 divided by 108. So now you do the stoichiometry, one mole of this requires one mole of this, so the ratio will be same. So this requires this many moles of this. Now, I know the number of moles of electron formula is Q divided by 96,500. Again, I can write Q as I into T, right? I is given to you, T is what is asked, everything we know. So you just substitute and get the answer T as 125 seconds. That would be the answer to this question. Okay, I hope everybody understood, <clears throat> right? Okay, one last question in this kind of, uh, like in this area, and then we'll move on.
Okay, take on the question. Like if you've taken this down, once you've been placed, or have just taken this down already. Okay, take down. W grams of AG. W, W, so W grams of AG is deposited is deposited by a passage of current w grams of ag was deposited by a passage of one ampere current for one half okay w grams of ag is deposited due to passage of one ampere current for one hour Right. Now the question is, find the time required, find the time required for the same value of current, find the time required for the same value of current <clears throat> to deposit, to deposit W grams of magnesium, Mg find the time required for the same value of current, basically one ampere, right? For the same value of current to deposit W grams of Mg. Okay, W grams of Mg. Right, so they said that some W grams of Ag required one ampere current for one hour. Now I'm using one ampere current and I want W grams of Mg, how much time is required? It will definitely not be one hour again, don't worry. Right? Think about it and do the problem. And I'll tell you, whatever be the calculation, just keep it. Do not calculate. You calculate at the end. Okay? Calculate only at the end. And there is a reason for this because everything will cancel out at the last. Do not calculate for every step. Okay? Calculate at the last step. Only at the last, last step. Go for it. I'll give you five, ten minutes. Solve the problem. And tell me, the, I want the answer in terms of hours. Okay, not seconds. I want the answer in terms of hours. Yeah, I understood that I was on mute. Thank you, Sajibhya. Now again, I'll go to mute because there is noise. You tell me the answer once you find out. Okay. So, could you repeat the question once? Yeah, sure. W grams of AG is deposited due to passage of one ampere current for one hour. Find the time required for the same value of current to deposit W grams of MG, magnesium. Okay, sir. Right.
is again i'm telling you if you calculate it will take a lot of time do not calculate calculate the last step okay So what is the molar mass of AG? AG is one not eight. Magnesium is twenty four. You said Mg is fourteen, right? Mg is twenty-four. Twenty-four is the mass. Right? Okay, sir. Let me see if anybody actually does need answer. They said four point five half, four and half half. Yeah, very fast. They said. Yes. But anyway, we'll wait for some more time. Like the options are there. The options are like nine hours, four point five hours, one hour, and three hours. So here, I ask for us. Good chance that your answer might be right. Let me see if I get any other answer with the same answer. Then I'll solve. I hope everybody is solving. Once the title people. I'll give you maybe one more minute. Anybody wants to tell me the answer? They can tell me. If not, I'm solving.
I think I will solve. Okay. So first, we'll start with your uh, Ag first, and we'll go on to magnesium. Okay. So what they say? They first will write the equation. Ag plus accepting a from the form Ag. So they are telling that W grams of Ag is deposited. That's what they're telling. Okay. Using what? Using a current of one ampere uh, for time period of one hour. I deposited. W grams. Actually, if you just think properly, I mean, we can find this W, right? We, this is what we do. If I know these two values, I know the number of moles of electron, I know the number of moles of electron, I know the number of moles of Ag. From number of moles of Ag, I'll be able to find what this is W. Very simple, right? Let me do that first. Okay. But I am not going to calculate this value. There's a reason to that. Anyways, so first, let us calculate what is the charge value. Charge is basically going to be 1 into 1 into 3600. Now, why am I putting 3600? Because it's an R, I want it in seconds. Okay, so it's basically 3600 coulombs. Okay, what will be the number of moles of electron? Number of moles of electron would be 3600 divided by 96500. That is Q divided by F. Hope you all remember the formula. Right, now that is the number of moles of electron here. Okay, that is 3600. Divided by 96,500 is the uh, number of moles of electron. So obviously now you look at the ratio. Ratio is 1 is to 1. So whatever be the number of moles of electron, that will be the number of moles of Ag. Right? So number of moles of Ag is also going to be 3,600 divided by 96,500. That is the number of moles of Ag. Right? Now what is this W then? This if I multiply with atomic mass of Ag, I'll be getting the uh, mass of Ag. Right? So this... 3600 divided by 96500 into the atomic mass of Ag, which is 108, is what is my W value. Very simple. We got the W value. Done. Right? Do not calculate, guys. Just keep it as such. Okay? We'll keep it as such. Right? We got the W value. Very simple. Right? Till now, uh, all the problems we have solved of this case only. Very simple. Right? Now, moving on. Moving on to main Mg. Mg2 plus will accept two electrons to form Mg solid. Now I know what is the mass of Mg deposited. Right? Mass of Mg deposited is 3600 divided by 96500 into 108. Right? Because I told you this in the question, they are told that same W grams of Mg, I mean W grams of Ag, same W grams is only deposited for Mg also. So we know what is the W value. So we know what is the mass of Mg deposited. Oh God, what the, what is wrong with these guys? I'm so sorry, people. This I will change the place actually. Okay. From next class. This is so noisy. Anyways, okay. So till now there is no problem, right? We calculated what is W. Same value of W will be there for Mg also, and we know what is the W value. Right. So let us calculate what is the number of moles of Mg. Okay, because if I can find the number of moles of Mg, I can find the number of moles of electron. From number of moles of electron, I can find Q. From Q, I know the formula is I into T and I can find this T value. 
because the i i value is same i value is 1 ampere right it is given in the question right anyways so let us calculate the number of moles of mg now now this is the given mass the entire thing is the given mass divided by the molar mass will give me the number of moles of mg right so it will be 3600 divided by 96500 into 108 now i will divide this by molar mass of mg that is 24 divided by 24 now if you put whole thing divided by 24 eventually it will become like this only no problem okay now this is what is the number of moles of mg okay now you go for stoichiometry you can find the number of moles of electrons now now you see one mole of mg requires two moles of electron i can write one mole mg requires two moles electrons so how many moles i have here this many moles that is 3600 divided by 96500 into 108 divided by 24 moles will require twice of this is it not if one mole requires two moles this many moles will require twice of this correct very simple so i can easily find the number of moles of electron right is equal to 3600 Divided by nine thousand five hundred into one hundred eight by twenty four into two, is it not? Number of moles of electron only twice the number of moles of magnesium. No problem. Okay. So for now, I'll just cancel these two and write it as twelve. Okay. So number of moles of electron is basically three thousand six hundred divided by nine ninety six thousand five hundred into one hundred eight divided by twelve. No problem. Okay, one or eight divided by twelve will cancel. And if you want, you can cancel it right away. No problem. I can do that. Just keep it. Okay. So that is the number of moles of electron. And this number of moles of electron is equal to what? Q divided by F, or I can write it as I into T divided by F. Right? F is basically ninety six thousand five hundred. Okay. Now all I need is this T. Okay. All I need is this T. So ninety six thousand five hundred and ninety six thousand five hundred gets cancelled. Right now, I have this twelve and one or eight also getting cancelled. Right, so what I'm getting is T as nine into three thousand six hundred seconds. Right, so yeah, we get we'll be getting the answer obviously in terms of seconds. Right, hope you all understand. Now I want the answer in terms of hours. So what I do, I want the answer in terms of hours. I will divide this by three thousand six hundred. Right, so what will be the answer? The answer would be nine. Will be the answer to this question. Okay, I'll just repeat quickly what and all we did. Right, they said that one ampere current for one hour. They said W grams of Mg is deposited by the normal method. I calculated what is the number of moles of electron with Q by S, and I calculated the number of moles of Ag. And from number of moles of Ag, I calculated what is the W value. Done. Right, and then we went on to see what is happening in Mg. That is magnesium. Now I know the W value because I know the mass of Mg deposit because W grams of Mg and W grams of Ag is same, right? So I know the number mass of Mg. I calculated number of moles of Mg from number of moles of Mg. I calculated number of moles of electron, right? Number of moles of electron is nothing but Q by F. That is Q is equal to I into T divided by F is ninety thousand five hundred. So if you cancel, eventually you will find the T in halves to be nine halves. I hope everybody understood. Can I get S S from everybody if they understood? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Nice. Yes, sir. Okay, one, two. I have fifteen people. Guys, come on. Okay, the chat box. Yes. You can get a yes. yes sir. Okay, three. Yes, sir. Three, four, five. Okay, one more in the chat. Six. Okay, seven. Eight, nine. Fine. Okay, very good. Very good. If everybody understood, I'm happy. That's all I need to know. Right. Very simple problem. Right. Okay, I think enough. I have enough of problem with respect to Faraday's first law, right? I told you that we have two laws for Faraday's. We saw Faraday's first law, and we did a lot of problems. Second law is not as important as the first law, but still problems might come, right? So now we'll see Faraday's second law. Please take take the statement. When I give you the statement, please take down. for the same quantity of electricity for the same quantity of electricity passed through for the same quantity of electricity passed through two different electrolytes 
right, for the same quantity of electricity passed through two different electrolytes. The mass of substance, comma, okay, wait, wait. So I'll repeat this thing entire again. For the same quantity of electricity passed through two different electrolytes, comma. The mass of substance deposited, the mass of substance deposited in both the electrodes, the mass of substance deposited in both the electrodes is directly proportional, is directly proportional to their equivalent masses, to their equivalent masses okay right i'll repeat the statement people right for the same quantity of electricity passed through two different electrolytes the mass of substance deposited at both the electrodes that is for electrolyte one and for the electrolyte two is directly proportional to their equivalent masses okay is directly proportional to their equivalent masses okay now first tell me how many of you has have not heard this term equivalent masses yes can i you can put it in the chat box have you uh, have, how many of you heard yes if you have heard yes if you're not heard please put a no go for the chat box equivalent mass if you have heard put a yes if you're not heard please put a no Okay, heard about it, but don't know what exactly it means. Yeah, no problem. Okay, like that. Yes, please tell me. I just want to know who knows and who doesn't know. Okay, nobody. Oh, great, great, great. Very good, very good. Ah, wonderful. So that is the problem with CBSC, right? They will give all this, but in 11th class, you don't have the concept of equal in masses. If you like, it should be there in the first, first chapter. Some basic concepts of chemistry, you study about moles, stoichiometry, all those, right? Actually, that should have been introduced. Equal and mass should have been introduced at that time itself. But yeah, pathetic, pathetic, uh, you know, form of implementing education. Anyways, so like I'll just tell you what is equal and mass. I'll give you some introduction and then we'll see and see this. What do you want to start a second law? Okay, fine. So people, when I say equivalent mass, Okay, now there is a proper definition for this. Okay, there is a proper definition for this, but we don't have to go into the definition. I will I will give you one formula. Okay, equivalent mass is connected to the molar mass. Okay, equivalent mass of any substance is equal to molar mass of that substance divided by something called as N factor. Okay, equal. Equivalent mass is equal to molar mass divided by something called as an N factor. This is the integer value, like 1, 2, 3, 4, like that it can be. Like it can be 0 0.5, 0 0.25, nothing, right? It should be a proper integer. Okay, fine. Now, what are these n factors, right? Now, n factor will be different for different, different species. Okay, now, for elements, right, for elements, the n factor is there the n factor is their valency. Say for example, right, I want to know what is the equivalent mass of aluminum, aluminum metal. Okay, I want to know what is the equivalent mass of aluminum metal. What is the formula now? It's equal to molar mass, molar mass of aluminum is 23, right, divided by the n factor. I told you n factor for elements is the valency. I know uh, aluminum has a valency of 3. Right, so equivalent mass of aluminium is nine grams. Nine grams, or you can just say it as okay, nine grams. So, what is the equivalent mass of aluminium? Okay, now for example, if I ask you for sodium, right, equivalent mass of sodium, now that would be 23 grams for sodium, but I know the valency of sodium is one. So, in this case, the equivalent mass and the 
molar mass are same. Okay, say if I ask you what is the equivalent mass of um, say uh, uh, chlorine, again you will just put 35.5 divided by 1 because I know chlorine has a valency of 1. Right? Okay. Now that is for elements. Right? Now if you have ions, for ions, right, it is the n factor is their charge value, magnitude of charge. Not the positive or negative doesn't matter, but what is the value, magnitude of the charge? That for that, right? Say, I think the same thing will work for all of these. I know aluminum will form Al3 plus, right? Aluminum will form Al3 plus. So obviously the charge value, the n factor in this case would be three. So 27 divided by three will become nine grams. Okay. Now, if at all you have, um, if at all you have an ionic compound, right? Say for example, I want to find what is the this thing for aluminum chloride. I want to find what is the equivalent mass of aluminum chloride. Okay, now it is very simple, people. This is equal to equivalent mass of aluminum plus equivalent mass of chlorine. Okay, you don't have to include this three and all. Now the beauty, right? As the beauty of equivalent concept, I'll tell you in some time. Right, it's a very beautiful concept. Anyways, we don't have to spend time. So the thing is, it is equal to equivalent mass of aluminium plus equivalent mass of chlorine. Right, equivalent mass of aluminium. I know how to calculate twenty-seven divided by three because it, it is going. To, it is Al three plus. Okay, so twenty-seven is the atomic mass divided by the n factor, which is three. Same way for chlorine. I know it is thirty-five point five divided by uh, one because it is going to form Cl minus minus one. With the charge value which I'm taking, right? I add these two values, and that is the value for equivalent mass of aluminum chloride. Okay, right now, other stuff say I we saw about ions, ionic compounds, ele elements, right? Now, say I can even do it for acids or bases. Okay, for acids or bases, the n factor is nothing but the number of H plus. Or number of OH minus ions which can be produced from single molecule of the acid or base. For example, right, if I ask you what is the equivalent mass of H2SO4, right? Now you see it's an acid, can give me two H plus ions, right? So it would be 98, which is the molar mass of H2SO4, Divided by the n factor in this case is what? Number of H plus ions. Number of H plus ions is 2. So it will be 49 grams. Right? Same way, if I have to find um, equivalent mass of, uh, say, calcium hydroxide, okay? Calcium hydroxide would be how much? Uh, what is the molar mass? Okay, what? Uh, for 20, 20, uh, 16 plus 1, 17. 17 is 34. 34 plus. Uh, 20 is 54. Okay, 54 is the molecular mass of COH twice. I know it can give me two OH minus ions, right? So that would be divided by two. N factor in this case would be two. So this would be 27 grams is the equivalent mass of COH twice. Okay, right. So like this is this is you can do for acids and bases. Now at last you can go for equivalent masses of oxidizing or reducing agents, okay, oxidizing or reducing agents. Now for them, the N factor is number of electrons lost or gained, depending on what you're talking about, right? So I know an oxidizing agent will undergo reduction, right? An oxidizing agent will undergo reduction. So if it undergoes reduction, obviously it would have gained electrons. How many electrons it gained? That is what is the n factor. For example, let me uh, let me uh, look at this. Say if I have MnO4 minus, okay. Now MnO4 minus, say it reacts with Fe2 plus. Now it's an oxidizing agent, so it will oxidize Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, right? And depending on the medium, say this is acidic medium, assuming that this is acidic medium, MnO4 minus will actually form Mn2 plus. Okay, this will be the reaction. Now you see MnO4 minus. You look at the what is the charge for manganese here? Manganese charge is calculate the oxidation number would be seven plus seven. Okay, now here for manganese the oxidation charge is the oxidation number is plus two. Okay, plus seven here. 
plus two here. So you will see that basically five electrons are accepted, right? Five electrons are accepted. So if I have to know what is the equivalent mass of MnO4 minus during this reaction, only for this reaction, right? In this reaction, five electrons are accepted. So it will be the molar mass of MnO4 minus whatever be the value divided by five. The end factor in this case will be five. I told you for uh, oxidizing or reducing agents, the end factor is nothing but the number of electrons lost or gained. In this case, five electrons are gained by MnO4 minus, right? To form Mn2 plus. So the end factor is five. Like this, you can calculate. Okay, so that is what is called as my equivalent mass. Okay, now it is very similar to molecular mass, except that you have to include the term n factor. Okay, so just like number of moles, right, we have something called as number of equivalents. Okay, just like you have number of moles, right, how do you have, like that you have on one more term an equivalent concept called as number of equivalents. Okay, now it's very simple people, number of equivalents is equal to given mass divided by the equivalent mass. Like how do you put for moles is equal to given mass by molecular mass. So like that, equivalence, number of equivalents would be given mass by equivalent mass. That is the only difference. Okay, now why are we studying about all this? Okay, the beauty is that for more concepts, say I will take example. Say I have NaOH reacting with H2SO4 to form uh, Na2SO4 plus uh, H2O. Normal neutralization reaction between NaOH and H2O. Okay. Now, if at all I give you the data, like say I have some 10 grams of uh, uh, H2SO4 is there, I want to know that a mass of NaOH, mass of H2O, mass of NaOH, everything you have to find. Right. Now, what will you do? You will convert this into number of moles and do the stuff. First, you have to get the balanced equation, right? This will be two, this will be two, right? You have to get the balanced equation, do the stoichiometry, so on and so forth. Right. But if I am going to use equivalent concept. If I don't go for number of moles, but if I go for number of equivalents, and if I use equivalent mass, there is no requirement of balancing the chemical. Oh, no. One second, people. One second. Sorry, guys. I really have to change the place. Anyway, so what I was telling is, uh, if you use equivalent concept, right? You have, are you, are you? We know how to do the pro same problem with mole concept. Very simple, right? But if at all I have to do the same thing with equivalent concept, the advantage is that there is no requirement. You don't need to balance the equation. We don't need it. Okay. Even even if we don't have a balanced equation, this is going to work. How it will work, let me tell you. Say, now you convert this into number of equivalents, right? That is given mass divided by the equivalent mass of H2SO4, this is 49. You just calculated, right? You can remember uh, equivalent mass of H2SO4. Yeah, you can see 98 divided by N factor, N factor is 2. So 49 will be the uh, number of equivalents. Okay. Now, once you know this, there is no cross multiplication. The thing is, here also I'm going to have 10 by 49 number of equivalents. Here also 10 by 49, here also 10 by 49. You do not have to worry about how the number of moles will change. What is the ratio here? Ratio is 2 is to 1. Nothing, nothing is required. Right? Once you find the number of equivalents of one of them, all the others, the, the reactants and products, everything will have same number of equivalents. That's it. That is the beauty of equivalent concept. Okay, you do not require a balanced chemical equation. Once you find the number of moles of any one reactant or any one product, that's it. The problem is solved. You just have to put the same value for any uh, for all the other things. Say if I give you one more one more this thing like this. Say I give H two plus O two giving H two O. 
right? So obviously it is going to be two h two plus o two, but we don't need it, right? That's the that's the beauty of equivalent concept. Now I tell you, I have one equivalent of this. I have two equivalent of this. What is the number of equivalent of h two o? Right now it is similar to the case where I have one mole of this and two moles of this. Right? Hope you all remember if two uh, informations are given to you for this, you have to find out which is the limiting reagent, which is the excess reagent, and then only we can speak about like this. Okay. For this also, we need to find which is the excess and limiting. But but I told you if this is one equivalent. Right, this the requirement of this will also be one equivalent, and the requirement the the number of moles of H two number of equivalents of H two formed will also be one equivalent. So obviously, whichever is higher, right, that will be the excess reagent. In this case, two equivalent is higher, so O two will be the excess reagent. You don't have to like generally what you do, you go for cross multiplication, find out which is the limiting and excess and all that. Right, but in the when in these kind of things, if I if I tell you're going to use excess, uh, sorry, uh, equivalent concept. Whichever is higher, blindly you can say whichever is in higher amount between these two, that will be the excess reagent. The other one will be the limiting reagent. Very very simple. You can blindly say. Okay, so these are all the advantages of using your uh, equivalent concept. Okay, so that is what is now between that is what is called as equivalent mass, number of equivalents, and you even have just like how you have molarity. Right, the 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 proper term in equivalent concept is normality. Okay, very very simple. Normality is to be denoted by the letter capital N. Right, capital N. I know the molarity formula is N by V, number of moles of number of moles divided by volume. Here in this case would be number of equivalents by volume. That is the only difference. Okay. Here in this case, the range of number of moles by volume. All I'm going to have is number of equivalents by volume. That is normality. So three things: equivalent mass is similar to the molar mass. Number of equivalents is very similar to number of moles. Third thing is that the normality is very similar to the molarity. Okay, everything is connected, right? And what is the advantage of using equivalent concept? We do not, we do not need to know what is the balanced chemical equation. As long as I know the reactants and products, enough. I can do the problem. I can do the calculations. Okay, that is the beauty. That is the advantage of using equivalent concept. Okay, fine. So we started all this. What is the time? Okay, we have ten more minutes. So the why we started all this is for third second law. Okay, now you look at the statement, people. Right, you look at the statement. It says if for the same quantity of electricity, right, for the same quantity of electricity passed through two different electrolytes. Right, passed through through two different electrolytes, the mass of substance deposited in each of the electrode is directly proportional to the equivalent masses. Okay, for see what they are trying to say is, say I have two beakers. Okay, say one contains uh, magnesium chloride, the other contains aluminium chloride. Right? Okay. One contains magnesium chloride. Other contains uh, aluminium chloride. Okay. Say so to this, you pass one ampere current for one hour. To this also, you pass one ampere current for one hour. That is what you mean by same quantity. Basically, you will get the same Q value. Right? When I say same quantity of electricity, that means I am talking about same charge value being passed into the electrodes. Okay. Right, so I have one ampere current, one hour, one ampere current, one hour, same value of electricity I'm passing. So they are telling what is the mass of Mg deposited and what is the mass of aluminium deposited. It is that whichever it may, which will be higher, which will be lesser, is directly proportional to the equivalent mass of Mg. This is proportional to equivalent mass of aluminium. Right. So what I understand, I know the equivalent mass of Mg is very simple: twenty-four divided by twelve. Sorry, twenty-four divided by two, which will be twelve, because I know Mg will form Mg two plus, right? So twenty-four is the atomic mass of Mg, two is the n factor, so I calculate the value as twelve. For aluminium, I know the equivalent mass would be twenty-seven divided by three, because it forms Al three plus. So the n factor is three, the molar mass is this thing, so I have nine, right? So which has more? Obviously, twelve is greater than, um, twelve is greater than. 
nine, right? So there will be more amount. Say, for, I'm just giving you a random number. Say, I have ten grams of Mg deposited, and here I'll have only eight grams of aluminium deposited. Very simple. That is exactly what it says. More and more is the equivalent mass, right? More and more will be the particular mass of that particular element deposited, given that you use the same value of charge, right? Same same amount of electricity. Same quantity of electricity used. Now, if you use same quantity of electricity, whichever has higher equivalent mass, that will be deposited in more amount. Very, very simple. And now you can know how to calculate the equivalent masses also. Right? So putting it in proper way, right? Say M1. So basically, you understand that M1, if I write M1 is proportional to E1, M2 is proportional to E2. So I can write M1 by M2 is equal to E1 by E2. Very, very simple. Okay, M1 by M2 is equal to E1 by E2. M1 and M2 are the masses deposited for the two electrolytes. E1 and E2 are the equivalent masses of electrolytes 1 and electrolyte 2. Okay, right? I hope everybody understood. I hope everybody understood the concept of equivalent masses and how it is connected to my uh, electrochemistry. That is Faraday's law. How it is connected to this. Okay, I hope there's no problem. If there's any question, you can ask me, people. Is there anything you want to ask from the equivalent concept or anybody to understand anything you want to know? Okay, I suppose everybody understood. I hope everybody understood. Fine. So maybe we'll do some problem. Only one problem. We have five minutes, right? Yeah, we have almost five minutes. We'll just do only one problem and we'll wind up. Okay, please take down one Faraday of electricity. One Faraday of electricity is passed. One Faraday of electricity is passed through the solution containing one Faraday of electricity is passed through a solution containing. One mole each containing one mole each of AgNO3, comma CuSO4, copper sulfate, one mole each of silver nitrate, AgNO3, comma copper sulfate, CuSO4, comma aluminium chloride, that is AlCl3, and SiCl4, silicon chloride, and SiCl4. Okay, now the question is find the ratio, find the ratio, find the ratio of number of moles of, find the ratio of number of moles of. Ag, Cu, Al, and Si. Find the ratio of number of moles of Ag, Cu, Al, and Si deposited. Okay. Find the ratio of number of moles of all of these getting deposited. Okay. I'll repeat the question, people. One Faraday of electricity is passed through a solution containing one mole each of AgNO3, CuSO4, AlCl3, and SiCl4. Find the I mean, find the ratio of number of moles of these four getting deposited at the cathode. Obviously, they will be deposited at the cathode, right? Okay. So I have four containers, people. Right, four containers containing one one mole of each of this. Right, and I pass to each of them, I pass one Faraday of electricity. Right, what will be the ratio of the number of moles of element getting deposited? That's it. Try to find out. Tell me the answer. Hello, anyways, I'm going to help you.
Just use the formula. Oh, no, you don't have to use the formula. You can just find the ratios. You know how they are connected. Right? Yes, maybe you are finding like this is going to be a very simple problem. It does it, it should be taking this much time. Okay. You see, look at this. This is how you solve this problem. So I basically require mass ratios of this, right? So that ratio is very is directly proportional to the equivalent mass ratio. is to SI, right? Now they have told already one, one mole of each of them are there. So I know what, how do you find the equivalent mass? Equivalent mass will be how much? Um, for AG, it will be 108, right? I, I know it is 108 by one because it forms AG plus. CU forms CU2 plus. So for CU, it is 54 divided by two, right? And for uh, aluminium, it is 27 divided by 3, and for silicon, oh what? Uh, I forgot the value for silicon. Silicon is small atomic mass. Uh, for this thing is 24, so it is. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it should be 24. No, it's not 24. It's so silicon. Is, uh, wait, where's my phone? So it's showing 28. 28, okay, cool, fact, we'll have it. So now aluminum forms Al3 plus Si will form Si4 plus, right? So 28 divided by four. Like you don't have to calculate the value people, it is gonna get canceled. Now these are the ratios of equivalent masses, right? Now what they want is the molar ratio. I want the ratio in terms of number of moles. Now this will be, this will be your given mass, mole, right? This will be your given mass. What will be the number of moles then? 108 divided by 1 divided by 108, right? So basically all the molar masses, 108, 54, 27, 28, all of them are getting cancelled. So now the molar ratio will be 1 by 1 is to 1 by 2 is to 1 by 3 is to 1 by 4. I hope everybody understood what I'm doing here. So first thing is I want to know, uh, basically the mass of substance deposited will be directly proportional to their equivalent masses. I calculated the equivalent mass. But what they want, the answer in terms of number of moles of getting substance deposited. So this equivalent mass is going to be treated as the given mass. That's it. Okay, now given mass would be, I mean, given mass by molecular mass, that is 108 by 108, 54 by 2 divided by 54, 27 by 3 divided by 23, 28 by 4 divided by 24, everything. So all of the 28, 27, 54, 108, everything will be cancelled. So what will be the ratio you'll be getting? 1 by 1 is to 1 by 2 is to 1 by 3 is to 1 by 4. But we'll not be able to write the ratios like this. So what you can do is you can multiply this entire thing by 12. Right? If you multiply, I will be getting the ratio as 12 is to 6 is to 4 is to 3. 
right? Now, this is the ratio for AG is to CU is to AL is to SI, the number of holes ratio, obviously, right? The answer is this, right? 12 is to 6 is to 4 is to 3. Or you can, if you, if you want to stop with this, you can stop, but it'd be better if you write it like this. Where you multiplying by 12? Oh, the, just because I don't want these fractions, I want in terms of numbers. So I multiply this by 12. That's what okay, so like a common number. For all. Common number, correct, correct, correct. So that I'll be able to get whole numbers rather than having fractions, I'll have this number. That's it. Okay, so okay. Right, fine. I think we'll stop this today, people. I think already I crossed some time. Right? If you don't have any questions, we can stop. Right? Is there any questions? No doubt, sir. Okay, fine then. Thank you so much, people. We'll meet again next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.